quoted the, the three verses from the Quran, all you who believe, fear God as he should be feared and do not die, and instead of some, a state of submission to Islam, he was a very um, uh, wise man because he translated everything. It was almost as if he knew I was there and translated everything for me, you know, and, and he, I remember to this day what the khutbah was about. And I don't know if he did it because I was there or if that was his already planned khutbah, but it's almost as if it was meant for me. Um, the khutbah was that, the title of it was that the, the, the forgiveness of Allah is open to anyone at any time, at any place, uh, no matter what, unless they have committed shirk. And the, the, the prose of the, the khutbah was a very long hadith, uh, a very long hadith that all, some of you will know. Um, and just to make it short, it was the hadith where the Rasulullah met Angel Gabriel or Angel Jibreel and Angel Jibreel was telling them to tell him that if the Muslims commit this certain sin to tell them that Allah would forgive them and every time he would tell the Muslims they would say okay well then what about this sin and he would go back and meet with Gabe, uh, Angel Jibreel and he would go back and come back and say tell them that Allah will forgive them for that and this discourse happened you know for many different sins and then finally Angel Jibreel alayhi salam said that tell them that Allah has said no matter what they do even if their sins are compiled, you know, like the, the, the oceans are from the east to the west, as long as they have not associated a part with Allah, tell them that Allah will forgive them. And I remember he told me that, uh, or he said that, you know, that the door of repentance to God is open uh, as long as you have not seen the angel of death or the sun hasn't risen from the west. I, I didn't really understand the sun risen from the west thing at that time. But, um, and he said that, you know, God's forgiveness has to come from God alone. Uh, and he, this was the whole premise of his khutbah was on forgiveness and, and tawbah. And I was saying to myself, these are all of the same concepts that I had uh, formulated through reading the religious scriptures myself. And I'm asking myself, where did he get this stuff from? You know, where did he get all this? And he started using uh, names like, uh, he used the name Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh, he used the name Musa. And I'm like, uh, he translated it to, to Abraham and Moses. I'm like, where did he... You know, where is he getting these? These are names from the Bible. I know these people. And so after this, the, the, the khutbah, they started lining up for the, for the prayer. And I got apprehensive because everybody's getting up in front of me and blocking my exit from the door. <laughs> and so I guess they, one, one guy in the back saw, saw me and he, because I had to move back a little bit, he said, we're about to pray. And I said, pray to who? And he said, to God. I said, which one? And he said, the, the one that created the heavens and the earth, you know, the same one that's in the Bible, you know, the, the only creator of the heavens and the earth, the only God. I said, yes, I, I, I know him. Um, and, the, and, and so the Imam started to pray, and I, when he recited the Quran, I know it sounded very intriguing. I had no idea what it was. Um, but then when I saw Muslims bow and prostrate on the floor, verses and verses of every religious book that I had ever read started ringing off in my head that this was the way men of God prayed and the first thing that I could think of in my mind was this is worship that's what I said to myself this is not prayer because prayers are asking God for something these people are worshiping God uh, so I said to myself that you've written this you've written this religion off way too easily I, I thought I was a much more open-minded person than that and I was ashamed of myself that I had written it off with just one little book. You know, I had put all these studies into the other religions. I read this one thing about Islam and was done. So I went uh, to the Imam after, the, after Jummah. I, you know, he talked to me. And I would have to say that I was probably a little bit rude with him. Um, and I've asked him to forgive me. The, you know, I saw him a few years later. I said, you got to forgive me for the first time you saw me. Because he started telling me, you know, uh, would you like to know a little bit more? He, he had a very heavy accent. He was an Egyptian brother. Would you like to know a little bit more about Islam? He tried to give me some pamphlets. I said, no, 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 no. I, I, don't, I don't want any of this right here. I said, do you have a book? This is what I wanted to know. Do you have a book? Can you give me? He said, yes, we have a book. Uh, I, I said, it's called the Quran. I said, can I read it? Uh, uh, is it in English? Can I read it? He said, sure, you can read it. And then he tried to explain it to me a little bit how it came by. I said, no, nah, just give me the book because the book should speak for itself. Um, so I took the Quran home and on Friday night I started to read it because this is a book I had never seen before uh, and I was very interested so I, I went home and I opened this opened the Quran and I read the Fatiha it seemed to me kind of like the Lord's Prayer you know it was a little, little similar to what I found in the Bible um, but then I started to read Surat al-Baqarah uh, I started to read Surat al Imran, and I started to see names that I had seen before I started to see names like Abraham Moses, David, Jesus, uh, Yahya, John the Baptist, Zechariah, Mary, and I said, I know all of these names, but 
there was something different about these people in this book. Uh, the prophets that I found in the Bible uh, were people that were deplorable, of, of not very character. These same men in the Quran were someone who were at the highest echelon of moral character and moral fiber. They were someone that was an example to be followed because they lived the message that they preached. Therefore, they were uh, able to be followed and emulated. So, I read all of these chapters and I, and I read the story of, of Jesus, uh, peace be upon him. Because when I saw the name Jesus first, I, that really intrigued me. I wanted to see what does this book have to say about Jesus. And I read the, the story in, 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 in Ali Imran, and I read the story in Surah al And it was so, it was, it was more beautiful than anything I had ever read in the New Testament, or any, any nativity story that I had ever heard. It was more beautiful than that, times ten. Uh, the, I remember the only thing that I could capture in anything I had ever read in the New Testament, or any, any nativity story that I had ever heard. It was more beautiful than that, times ten. Uh, the, I remember the only thing that I could capture my mind was the miracle of how uh, because in the Bible you never really figure out the conflict of how Mary gets over this this um, point finger pointing at her about her coming with a with a baby and she's not married uh, there's no real into that there's no real defense for her uh, from this in, in, in the New Testament but the Quran is so explicit and so clear that the Jesus' first miracle was to speak from the womb, as a, to speak as a baby and defend the honor of his mother, something that you cannot deny, something that you cannot deny about her, who Mary was, when you have this baby speaking on her behalf. So, I would say, I read the Quran entirely in three days, but that first night, after I had made it through Surah Al-Ali Imran, my heart was already given to this book. I, I, I didn't know what it meant to be a Muslim, I didn't know how, how to be a Muslim, I didn't even know what that meant. Uh, but I knew that whoever it was that followed this book, I wanted to be like these people. Uh, I wanted to be like the people that I read about in this book. Uh, these were people I could follow, these were prophets. This was a book of guidance. And this was something that the book is calling and appealing to me. That if you don't believe in this book, you never see that, I've never seen this in any other scripture. The direct challenges that are in the Quran, that if you don't believe this book is true, put it to the test. Put it to the test. And this was something that was so astounding to me. That God is telling you over and over again, if you don't believe this is the truth, test it. Bring me something else like it. Test it. Put it to test. If it was written, if there was more than, I mean, all of the analogies about God, everything was so logical, so rational, so reasonable in my mind that it was like 2 plus 2 equals 4 and that was it. There was no 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3, egg, yolk, water, fight. There was none of that foolishness the Quran was very direct and very straightforward in its teachings so I gave my heart to Islam uh, that night in, uh, in my living room reading the Quran and you know and I, I cried and cried you know that I had been looking for the truth all this time had searched all this way and it was right across the street right across the street from my house and so I went back on Monday uh, to accept Islam and ask these Muslims where in the world they've been all this time and I go, ready to go in there and, and, and do my thing, and I go and the masjid is locked. And because there was, they only came on Fridays in for Isha uh, during that time, and I didn't know. Uh, so I said, okay, I, I guess I have to come back on, on Friday. Uh, because every time I passed by the masjid after that, it was always locked. So I came back on Friday, and I, and I took my shahada. You know, and as they say, the, you know, the rest is history. Um, but I don't travel around the world, and this was in December of 1998. Um, I don't travel around the country and the world telling my story, you know, just for the entertainment value. Even though uh, I've been told it does have some entertainment value. I don't tell it for that person for, for sure. If that was the only, only reason, then you could just get it off of YouTube and, and it was the same exact story. I'm going to finish with this and I hope you can give me 10 more minutes, inshallah, to, to, to tell you why I go around telling my story. I tell my story to, to let everyone realize that there are millions of millions and millions of people just like me. Just like me in 1998, searching for the truth, can't find a way out. There are millions of people, there are probably millions of people in California, hundreds and thousands, if not millions right here in, the, 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 in, in Orange County, in Los Angeles, in the Southern California area, 
that want to know the truth, that are tired of hearing the same garbage preached to them over and over again, tired of this uh, shaitan box telling them the same thing over and over again, tired of the world being in the condition that it's in, tired of their life being in the condition it's in, and we as Muslims have the solution to every single one of their problems. And guess where we keep it at? Right here inside the masjid. Right here inside the masjid we have all of this truth. We have the solution to every problem in the world. You want to solve the world hunger? Uh, the world hungers, pro the, the problem of world hunger? Islam has the problem. You want to solve the problem of world poverty? Islam has the answer. You want to fix the economic situation of this country? Islam could fix it tomorrow. And this was in an op-ed piece in the Washington Post. In the Washington Post there was an op-ed piece that that the two markets that are falling apart in this country are investments and, 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 and housing. And there are two people in this market that while the, the rest are bottoming it out, this market is steadily climbing. It's not shooting, uh, getting rich overnight like people want to, but it is continually going up and that is Islamic financing and Islamic housing markets. These two things are so steady and so strong that uh, uh, Economists in, in DC are trying to figure out how they can take some of these Islamic principles some of these, from these investing in housing firms and plug them into this system to give it some stability because they realize that you won't get rich overnight in the Islamic system but it will be stable. It will be something that will give stability. So they are starting to find out that Islam has the answer and the solution to their problems but we already know this. We already know this that we can solve every world problem with Islam would put it into it but the problem is we're hiding it from the people unfortunately willingly or unwilling knowingly unknowingly we are hiding this from the people and there is a statement in the Quran and that, that Allah warns the Jews about what they did with their religion and it is a statement that is left in the Quran for us that verily those who conceal the evidences and the clear proofs after we have made it clear for them in the book they are those who are cursed by Allah and cursed by those who curse until and ex unless they, <clears throat> they repent and reveal that which they have been concealing those I will accept their repentance because I am the one who accepts it the most merciful we have become guilty just the same way the Jews have of hiding the truth about their religion when they saw the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, they knew the truth and wanted to hide it people we know that we know the truth about Islam and we are hiding it we as Muslims are running around begging Allah for dignity and honor and help when He has already given it to us in this deen. Everything that a Muslim could ever want has already been given to him in this deen of Islam. Anything that you ask Allah for, there is an account set up for you to go take it out of. You just got to find it where it's at. And any of you, I'm not going to go through the ayahs for there too long, but if you want to know the solutions to every one of your problems in this world and the hereafter, just go read Surah Al-Saf, ayah 10 through 13. Very, very easy solution. If I had the time, I would read them to you, inshallah. But we have the cure to every disease in the world. And, and we're not giving it to the people. And I want to use this as a parable because I really want this to hit home with you. Uh, let's say, what is your name, brother? Abdullah. Abdullah, mashallah. Let's say me and Abdullah are, are, are best friends. We're brothers in deen. We're roommates. And we've been roommates for years and years and years. 